Welcome to Pivot and Thrive. I'm Karen McCarthy, founder of the Vermont Collaborative Circle, a community resource for entrepreneurs dedicated to making Vermont the place where businesses and families thrive. In our Pivot and Thrive community, we come together to make better informed decisions about running a business in Vermont. Before we begin today, I'd like to recognize that this workshop is being recorded on Abenaki land. We'll have the opportunity for a brief Q&A at the end. Feel free to populate your questions through that the call and we'll address them before we close. I'd like to welcome Emily Ely, a business mindset and a growth coach to facilitate our workshop today on how to create a scalable offer. Welcome, Emily. As I shared, this topic is just one that I'm so excited about, and Yay. I'm really, really glad to bring you on for it. We always hear about ways to work smarter, not harder. And um, it's just been such a, a fun project to connect with entrepreneurs and help people leverage what they're already doing to elevate their work and create more opportunities for growth in their business. So I'm really excited to continue that conversation um, and, and just get started. So thank yeah. you so much. No, I, I love what you said, Karen, about like taking what you're already doing. And that's something we'll talk about is some of these, um, some of these scalable offers, I'm going to really encourage you to think about what you're already doing and how we can tweak what's already built and already created to be more scalable versus trying to start from scratch and create this brand new offer out of nowhere, right? All right, cool. Well, I am, do I have a sharing? Make you host. Yeah. Here we go. Give it to me. Awesome. All right. Going here. You guys use the new present in in uh, Canva yet? Just side note question. I have. I have like the new like live feature where people can engage. Oh, uh, yeah. I haven't. I haven't done it where people can engage. That's fun. Yeah. So they're like they're uh, piloting a like their own like webinar software. Essentially, it's pretty cool. fantastic. Cool. Yeah. So eh, side note always geeking out about systems. I am. Um, awesome. All right. Well, welcome to how to create a scalable offer. As Karin said, I'm a strengths-based business coach. So I, my favorite thing to do is talk about strengths and that's specifically the Clifton Strengths Assessment. Some of you know me well, and I think some of you are at the hiring workshop we did a couple of weeks ago, which is great. Uh, and so we'll be kind of building off some of that. Um, before we get started, I definitely, I know a few of you are still multitasking right now. Um, but I encourage you to be as present as you can for the next hour. I think it's really hard for us to often carve out time for ourselves and for our businesses. So I want to encourage you that like you are worthy of that and you deserve to take time to focus on your business. Um, if you haven't already, can you take a sec to just introduce yourself in the chat? Um, let me know a little bit about like your name. Obviously you're here in, v in Vermont, I'm assuming, but tell me a little bit about your business. Would love to know if you have a scalable offer already, what is it? If you don't, tell me if you have a couple thoughts maybe. Um, would love to see that in the chat. And then um, we will be showing you guys our scaling roadmap. Um, we'll be talking about it a little bit at the end, but I'm just gonna drop that actually real quick uh, in the chat here for you guys and make sure you grab that before you leave. Uh, and we'll go over that um, near the end. All right. Let me get back in my presenter here. There we go. Okay. And if I don't know you, I think I know most of you here so far. Hey, Sarah. Um, but if I don't know you, I am Emily. I'm a strength based business coach. Um, I created the Made for More method and I run the Made for More Mastermind. Um, we specialize in teaching folks how to create sc sustainable, scalable offers. This is like my bread and butter is scalable offers. I love talking about this topic. Um, and we're also hiring pros. So we focus on retiring solopreneur hats and teaching people how to really utilize their amazing teams that they do hire. Uh, like I said, I'm a huge fan of the Clifton Strengths Assessment and we weave all of our strategies in the Made for More Mastermind through this, uh, through your unique strengths profile. And we'll talk a little bit more about how that shows up with these uh, strengths offers. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Oh, we have two Sarahs. Sarah Adet and Sarah Hogger, awesome. Thank you for introducing yourselves. Ooh, I'm gonna need to eat some of that cake for sure. Um, I am also a lot more than a business owner and I like to always touch on this at the beginning of each of my presentations. 
And the reason that I have space and time and that I'm not burnt out every single day as an entrepreneur is because I have a scalable offer and I have a really wonderful high functioning team. Uh, these are two things that we believe in Made For More are required for a sustainable business to exist. Uh, so I like to highlight that like I'm not, uh, although I could work, I could be a workaholic, I love working. I will acknowledge that. Um, I'm not. I spend a lot of time. I usually take Fridays off. I don't work on the weekends. Uh, I confine my work hours from usually about 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. And uh, I get everything I need to get done in that time frame because of the way I've built my business and because of our sustainable, scalable offers and team. Hey, Erica, thanks for introducing yourself. So I like to play a little true false in the beginning of these presentations, just to make sure that you feel like you're in the right place and you're going to get the value that you're looking for today. So let me know in the chat if it's a true false for all of these statements. You have a strong feeling that you're capable of making more money. Let me know in the chat if you're like, I have this inclination. I have an idea that I could make more money than what I'm currently making. You're tired. You've maxed out or are about to max out on your hours in the day that you can serve clients. So a lot of you are probably um, service providers. You are either meeting one-on-one -on -one with clients or you have some sort of product or service that's kind of limiting how many people you can see in a given day or in a given hour. You're sick of trading hours for dollars. You have a strong feeling that there's a better way to do this, right? Like you are currently charging either per event or per hour, and you have an idea that there might be a better way to go about this. You're worried that if you turn your offer scalable, you're gonna lose that level of intimacy and premiumness that you're known for, right? This is a big fear that we see with entrepreneurs when they come to us and made for more. They're like, okay, I'm down for the scalable offer idea, but I'm really known for like delivering this incredibly high touch, very unique, very intimate experience. And I don't want to lose sight of that, right? I don't want to be known for something else. And we can deal with that. I do believe that intimacy is scalable. You know that you can't go any further like this, but the learning curve to establish a new offer often feels daunting and time consuming. And you simply do not have more time in the day, right? We've already figured out that you're maxing out on those hours. And so the idea of creating something new sometimes feels like it's more work than maybe it's worth. And I'm going to tell you exactly why that is not the case today. All right. So tell me in the chat, do any of those residents resonate? Did we have any trues, any falses? Are we in the right place? Hey, Farine, thanks for introducing yourself. All true, Sarah says, all true. Erica says, Freen, hell yeah, truth. Okay, Katie says, yep, all right, we're all on the same page, I love it. All right, so if you have done a presentation with me, you know I love talking stats about women and money and business. This is one of my faves. And so we've got some new statistics that came out just this year. Um, these are all from the American Express State of Women-Owned Business Report. And if you want to link to this, just let me know at the end. I'd be happy to link to it. I can also throw it in the, um, in the uh, membership site in the feed. This is a really wonderful report. And I, I encourage you to spend some time looking into it because it's speaking about us, right? It's talking about our businesses and what's happening for us and what we actually need. Um, so this past year, um, actually through COVID, women started 1200 new businesses every single day. Like I just, this stat like gives me goosebumps. Like every time I read it out loud, I'm like, that is so many businesses. Yeah, Freen, this is for real. And Freen, you were one of them, right? Didn't you start your business in 2020? We are magical. Yes. Okay. I thought so. So let me know in the chat, if you know someone who started a business in the last 12 months, uh, specifically a woman, uh, or if it was you that started in the last 12 months, we definitely want to hear that in the chat. Let us know. Of these new businesses, women of color started 64% of them. Erica, you started your business last year too. Yay, congrats. So women of color have seen faster growth in terms of total numbers of firms, employees, and revenue compared with all women-owned firms. So this is really cool because it's not just that women of color started more companies. It's they also hired more employees and they also saw higher revenue growth compared to all other women-owned firms. 
And 62% of women entrepreneurs claim that their business is their primary source of income. Tell me in the chat if this is true for you. It's definitely true for me. Uh, my business is my number one source of income. I am no longer a side hustler. I am no longer a hodgepodger. This is it. My business is, is what brings in the money each month. Katie, yeah, end of 29 is technically 2020. You fit into this set. Sarah, yes, this is you. Awesome. Sarah, your business is not yet, but you'd like it to be sometime soon. Excellent. Katie, no, but working to get there. Yep. And the scalable offer is exactly what's going to help us get over that mark. All right. And so even though we have all these amazing statistics, even though all of these women are starting businesses, almost 95% of businesses owned by women never generate more than $100,000 a year. This statistic is crazy. Women owned firms only employ 6% of the nation's workforce. That's it, 6%. And they contribute only under 4% of business revenue. This is actually the same numbers as in 1997, right? So even though businesses, women are generating and creating new businesses at astronomical rates. So the numbers in 1997, there were like 1200 new businesses a day last year, right? We remember that stat. In 1997, it was around like 600 to 700 new businesses a day. So we've like almost doubled how many businesses we're creating. And yet these businesses aren't making money, right? That's the main problem. That's the main takeaway here is why is this? Why aren't women owned businesses pushing past that six figure annual mark? What the report re figured out is the real issue is not getting more women to start businesses, but rather providing support to women who are already in business and enabling them to grow their enterprises to the next level. This is exactly what the Pivot and Thrive community is for, right? This is what Karen is trying to do. She is an exact example of the support that women need to get past that 100K mark. We don't need to promote more and more businesses to start. We need to invest in the businesses that have been created. The report recommends that the policy, that policy and programmatic support target firms with five to nine employees and those aiming at, but just shy of the million dollar mark. This is where the most, uh, it's kind of like the biggest bang for your buck is going to be seen is if we support businesses that are in this middle tier, right? Yes, absolutely. Freen, you said it's going to grow, expanding for my partner to join me in this journey. Yeah. You're going to scale up his work with All Heart between July and January. I love this. It's so exciting. I have a couple of friends who have retired their spouses and partners from their like corporate jobs and brought them into their businesses. And it's like such a fun thing to do. So this is why the Made for More team focuses so exclusively on hiring and scalable offers. This is my team. This is Jasmine up here in the corner. Uh, she does all of our tech and admin and all of the behind the scenes stuff. And this is Alex. This is our community coach. This is what our team is focused on. We want to be this support, this programmatic support, right? That's what we're really focused on. That's what Karin's focused on. That's why you're in the Pivot and Thrive community. All right. So this is really about you taking back your financial power. I know this is one of my favorite pictures of my photo shoot from a couple of years ago. She was like, do you have any money? And I was like, and I did for some reason, I like had a bunch of, I can't remember what it was, why, cause who has money anymore, right? But I did, she was like, let's get it out. And I was just showering myself in money. And I was like, well, this is fun. If you haven't taken a money shoot, I suggest trying it. It's a little, it's pretty fun. When you refuse to exchange dollars for hours, this is a revolutionary act. You're putting your foot down and saying like my time is worth more than a specific dollar amount per minute, right? And that's what I needed you to really understand is with a scalable offer, there is no limit to how much you can make per hour. And that's what we're really looking for here. So tell me in the chat why you want to make more money. I start off almost every single workshop this way. I really think it's important for us to understand what it is about making more money that's important to you. So just shoot off a couple of things in the chat that stand out to you. A couple that are coming to mind for me lately are, I really want to make more money so I can pay my employees more. 
that's like a big motivator for me. I want to be able to raise their hours and I can't do that until I make more money. Uh, another one, we bought a house last year, which was very exciting. And buying a house is really expensive. <laughs> and houses have lots of things that need to get fixed. That's another motivator for me right now. Um, and I'd say another one is childcare. Childcare is expensive and I love it. And I love having it and I love having access to it. And I want to be able to keep doing that. Those are three of my whys for making more money right now. Tell me a couple of yours. Karin, you said, have the ability to make choices independent of financial streams, hire people, have a positive impact, invest in your business, take a vacation. Sarah, you said to stop having other jobs and to potentially buy a house. Absolutely. Katie, for your health, job burnout is no good. I would agree with that one, Katie. Yeah, our health is a big one. I just came from, I was saying to Karin before I got on here, I was just rushing back from a PT appointment. And like, I want to be able to do those things, right? I don't want to have to, um, another one someone said in a workshop previously was like, not wanting to have to weigh whether or not you get the fancy or the cheap takeout, right? Like, I want to just be able to buy whatever food I want to buy. I don't want it to have to be this discussion. All right. Keep dropping them in there. All right, so a lot of the time what happens when we decide that we want to earn more is that we decide we're going to work harder, we're going to work longer, we're going to be more disciplined, we're going to sit our ass down and focus, right? Like we get this like real hard mentality. We also tend to feel a lot of guilt and shame and embarrassment around um, not working really hard or not sticking to the schedule or not having good time management skills, right? We start to have all of these like blame and guilt and uh, we get really, really hard on ourselves. So it's this like double whammy of like, okay, I need to earn more. So I'm just going to work way harder, but then I'm also going to like beat the hell out of myself while I'm doing that, right? Like none of this leads to sustainable growth whatsoever. I'm guessing you probably know this leads to burnout. Uh, and so this isn't the answer, right? This isn't what we're looking for, not thriving at all. This behavior and this mindset is actually has a term. It's called internalized capitalism. You can let me know in the chat if you've heard this term before. And essentially what internalized capitalism is, is you're determining your worth based on your productivity, right? So like the amount I produce determines how worthy and how valuable I am. You often will feel guilty for resting, even when you're like, I'm going to take a vacation. And then on Sunday, this like comes up in sneaky ways, right? So it's like you take the vacation, you enjoy the vacation, but then Sunday comes and you're like, I am so stinking anxious. Like I feel so behind. I, it, Monday's going to be horrible. It's going to be so rough. I'm going to have to catch up on so many things, right? Like this is you feeling guilty for taking rest. You think hard work is what brings happiness right? None of these are true. I do want to just come back to Freen's comment real quick about her why, because I love this one. Um, Freen said, I grew up in a low income home. The narrative on living check to check was my life forever. Though this is no longer my narrative, it has left me financial, it left me with financial anxiety. Yeah, absolutely. This is like our money story, right? I want a collective income for my family to have their needs met and a cushion for joyful moments because we are deserving of thriving. Yeah. We are simply deserving of thriving regardless of what you create. And that's really important to understand. There is no connection between your productivity and your self-worth, which is why comments like uh, charge what you're worth are deeply problematic because that's not true and it's not possible. You can't possibly charge enough money to attach to your worth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. I hope this makes sense because it's like, this is a very, very hard narrative to rewrite, but it's a really worthy one to spend some time with. So I want to know, like, how does this internalized capitalism show up for you in your work, in your life? Like, how is this presenting for you right now? What's coming up for you? Yeah, Katie. Oh, Katie, I'm so glad to hear that. It never sat right with me either. Every time I heard it, I was like, that doesn't feel good. And I like had to sit with it for a really long time to figure out why that was. But it's like, yeah, there should be no equal sign between like money and worth. Like that's just like, those things are not synonymous in any shape or form. 
So tell me in the chat, what's coming up for you? Maybe just this week, like, let's be really present. How this week has this shown up for you? One way it's shown up for me was I was like, I'm going to cancel my PT appointment because I needed to get ready for this workshop today. And then I was like, bullshit you're ready. You don't need to work more. Go take care of your body, right? Your body needs you to be attentive, needs you to take care of it. Sarah, you said, yes, this is exactly what they say in cake decorating. It's awful. I know. It's just, it's because it's like that, like Pinterest worthy quote that you like, you know, and they just get circulating on Instagram. And it's like, I, we have to stop and really think about what kind, like what narratives we're putting out there into the world. And are they really in alignment with who we want to be? All right. So tell me a couple of things. What's coming up for you this week? How is this creeping into your, your mindset this week? Sarah, feeling like you need to be productive in some way at every moment. Yeah. I would even challenge some of you who are multitasking while listening to me right now. Because I know you are. I know it's hard. It's hard not to multitask because it's like, you're like, I have to get more done in less time all the time. Katie, you said, I don't deserve a rest now that I'm self-employed. Yeah. Right. You just got work, 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 girl. I hate that. It's like, it's not, it's not helpful and it's not true. We really need rest. And we're going to talk about rest a little bit in just a second. All right. So I want you to remember, keep dropping those in the chat. What's coming up for you this week. This is not what you need to be successful. It's actually the exact opposite. Um, and so we're, we're gonna work on that, right? Freen, you said you hate negotiating your price. Yeah, yep. Erica, Freen, tell me, is that like people are asking you to lower it or they're coming in with like lower offers off the bat? Tell me a little bit more about that. Erica, you said, I'm a service provider. I've been charging hourly, constantly discounting my rate or invoices while I'm getting established, totally. Sarah, I feel like I have to finish my to-do list on, my, on the weekends. Yeah, Sarah, that's a big one for me. Every single weekend, and I'm not, tell, I'm not saying that like by acknowledging this that you just all of a sudden like fix it. This comes up for me every single weekend during Bo's two-hour nap. I'm like, I could get a lot of work done in these two hours. And then I'm like, it's Saturday. Go outside, move your body, watch TV. I don't know, eat, right? Like you don't need to constantly be working in every pocket of time. Sarah, you said, Erica, yes, this is so me. It's so frustrating, Freen. You said it was a part of a previous kind of, oh, it slipped in right before I got you. Okay. Um, yeah. This is not what we need to be successful. We can talk definitely about like the discounting stuff as well. I had someone uh, at the beginning of the pandemic be like, well, what's your COVID discount? And I was like, I don't have a COVID discount. Like it's okay to like be firm in your pricing. Instead of thinking about pricing, like charge what you're worth. I really want you to think about charge what you need. I always, all of my pricing reflects the exact amount of money we need to make in order for the business to be successful. We're not charging to be greedy. We're not charging and attaching it to our worth. What we're doing is deciding based on what it costs me with payroll and systems and paying myself and all of that versus what price do I need to charge in order to meet that, right? That's where your pricing should be coming from. That's where your, your pricing needs to be rooted in reality, not rooted in value or what you want it to be or anything else, right? We need to price appropriate to what our needs are. Okay, so, so far we've decided what we really need is programmatic support to enable women to grow their enterprises to the next level. Yay, we're here, Karin is giving us that space. And the second is the knowledge and the strength to resist this internalized capitalism narrative, right? We need to keep calling it out. We need to keep acknowledging it and keep resisting moving in that direction. So let's talk a little bit about the alternative, right? That's what we're really here today. Um, Farin, you said you shared that the challenges, even though we know are worth educating folks is exhausting. Yes. Oh God, I know. There's like, uh, there's also, Farin, you might've seen that like whole 
there's been like a whole reversal of like the, can I pick your brain comment, right? Like, no, you can't pick my brain for free. My brain, like what's in my brain is a cul like culmination of years and thousands of dollars of education and, and like all of this stuff. Um, it's a side tangent, but yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> not just this, yeah. All right, so let's talk about these scalable offers that we all came here to figure out. So a scalable offer is very simply, it's something that can reach multiple people at once. It's the exact opposite of one-on-one -on -one services or products. A scalable offer will have no bottleneck or it has a fixable bottleneck. And this is what I really want you to be thinking about when we start looking at all the examples of scalable offers. I want you to think about, is there a fixable bottleneck in my current offer that would either make it scalable or make it even easier to scale, right? Because that's often like the best place to start is fixing what you already have. So scalable offers, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, I have a bit of a cough. Um, these are things, like I said, something that you may already have that needs to be tweaked. It might be something you're avoiding and it's probably due to fear, right? We've seen this a couple of times with me for more clients. They actually knew all along what their scalable offer was and they weren't acting on it because of fear of like, what kind of human do I have to be to take up that much space and to step into that, right? Like, because for some of these offers, you're thinking about reaching hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of humans. And, and that's a that's a different hat we need to wear, right? To be ready for that level of visibility. And so sometimes we're avoiding the offer we've been dreaming of out of fear. So be mindful of that. And sometimes it's something just so stinking obvious. It's just sitting right in front of you and you really just need a good brainstorm session to peel it out. All right, so we have three musts that we're gonna cover today. Um, and you will have the recording to this. I'm a big fan of like taking screenshots. I definitely encourage you to take a couple screenshots of some of these slides because some of them you're going to really want to come back to and workshop on. Um, and definitely, uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. So for these three must, we're going to go, we're going to break down each of these. The first one is your scalable offer needs to be in direct alignment with your strengths. Let me know in the chat, have you taken the Clifton Strengths assessment? And if you have, and you remember your top five, throw it in there. Sarah, no, Erica, no. I know Freen has. <laughs> Sarah, Audette said, yes, you took it after our last workshop. Yay! Sarah, do you remember what your top five are? Can you throw them in there? Katie, you finally did it. Woohoo! I'm just converting y'all left and right. I'm just going to make a strengths-based crew. It's going to be great. Awesome. All right. Keep putting those in there. So what we're going to talk about is how to make sure your strengths are in direct or your scalable offers in direct alignment with your strengths. Awesome. Karen's got hers out there. Freen. Yep. Freen and I are wooers. We love winning people over <laughs> and maximizing. <laughs> All right. And then number two is it must promise a transformation. So we're gonna talk a little bit about this, what your kind of what your offer promise is essentially. And then number three, as the offer grows, your costs do not, okay? And so this is something that we're gonna, we're gonna unpack a little bit, but the difference between scaling and growth, these are two different things and it's important that you understand the distinction here because a lot of the time we, people will use the word scaling inappropriately, they actually just mean growing. And, and this is a difference. We wanna make sure we have this distinction here. Sarah, awesome. Input, learner, intellection, restorative and achiever. Nice. You have a lot of similar uh, strengths to my husband. <laughs> All right, so number one, the four Clifton strengths. So these are the four domains. For those of you that have not heard of the Clifton strengths assessment, this is essentially like about a 20 minute assessment. It's really, hands down, I think the best assessment out there for understanding like strengths and, and what you're good at. It's geared, especially towards like the professional realm. Um, however, you will see all these strengths show up in your, uh, in your personal life as well. And you'll see it definitely in your relationships with anyone really. Um, and what it kind of comes down to is there are 34 strengths that all humans possess. And this is really important to understand. So 
even though like I'm asking people, what are your top five? What are your top 10? You possess all 34 strengths. It's just how easy it is for you to tap into and utilize that strength. That's what we're looking at. So when Katie says her top five are positivity, ideation, input, intellection, and developer, those are the five strengths out of the 34 that Katie can pull on and she will never get tired. She will never get bored. She will have endless energy to exist in those spaces, right? And so our goal here with these strengths is to be spending actually 80% of your time in business and in life really in those top five strengths, right? That's where we're going to be the most successful. And I argue make the most money as well, which is a nice byproduct, right? So these 34 strengths fall into four different domains. And these domains are executing, strategic thinking, relationship building, and influencing. And every single one of you leads with one of these domains. So one of these domains is like the easiest thing for you to tap into. For me, that's influencing. And that's exactly what I'm doing right here today. I'm showing up. I'm influencing you. I'm convincing you to take action, right? Hopefully very convincing. And what I'm part and what I follow up with is strategic thinking, right? And so for me, these types of workshops, I could do a workshop like this essentially all day long, every single day, and I would never get tired and I'd never get bored and I'd just constantly talk to you, right? That's when I know I'm in my strengths was when I leave this workshop and I'm like, oh, all right, uh, Karin, when's the next one? Can we do another one, right? You know, like that's when you, when you're feeling in that space where you're like, you just want to keep doing it over and over again, that's really that zone of genius that's your top five strengths that you're existing in. And so what we found in the Made for More program is that depending on the domain that you lead with, your scalable offer can actually kind of morph and transform to be more in alignment with that strength. And what I like to clarify here is that it doesn't mean that like uh, Karin could have, so like Karin, what do, you, do you know what you lead with? I'm a maximizer. I like to take things that are good and elevate them to their next level. And do you know what your dominant domain is? Influencing. Influencing. Okay. So this is a great example. Okay. So Karin and I both lead with influencing. However, Karin has a membership, which is the Pivot and Thrive community, right? And I have a mastermind, which is the Made for More program. So these are two totally different. I mean, you could argue there's some similarities, but fairly different scalable offers and we have the same dominant domain. Okay. And so what we've both done is found ways to align that offer so that we get to spend as much time as possible in our strengths. Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat if I'm like shooting over anyone's head right now. We good? For all of you multitaskers who are running around vacuuming, you have to run back to your computer and type in, yes, that makes sense. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so what we want to, I think let's spend a little bit of time with each of these four squares. If you know what you lead with, let me know in the chat what, do, what domain you lead with. You'll see it in your report. Um, I'll have to, oh, let me let someone in. I don't remember exactly what page it is, but you'll see it, pro it might be on the first page. It might tell you what domain that you lead with, but essentially what we're looking for, there are some common characteristics for folks leading with each of these domains and how it shows up in their offers. So I'm going to talk you through a couple of those. And if it's, if I'm speaking to yours, yeah, three and you lead with relationship building, um, we, you know, just kind of tune in for the ones that are yours. So let's start, we'll start, okay, we'll start with relationship building. So Katie and Freen, you lead with relationship building. People who lead with relationship building like to have often long-term commitments or long-term engagement in some shape or form. So it's really important to them. This is like um, contrary to influencers who often enjoy just one-time engagements. Influencers really like showing up and like wowing people and just like, uh, impressing them, convincing them to take some sort of action. And then they're like, cool, bye, like, see you later. And they're not really necessarily interested in that like longer term relationship nurture. Whereas relationship builders, that's really important to them. They want to see the evolution of their work. They want to see, um, you know, so folks with relationship building will often have offers that are like six months long or a year long. 
And again, this doesn't mean that like, if you have, like I know specifically Fareen does like one-time events, right? She's a public speaker. So she does a lot of these individual events, but she's connected to a deeper community, right? So she's found a way to make that relationship building work for her in that she continues to come back and stay connected with the people that she influences and the people she engages with. Um, Karin, yeah, so you lead with influencing closely, closely followed by relationship building. Exactly, so none of us are just one domain. We all have a combination. So mine is influencing followed by strategic thinking. So for me, and this was like a big issue in our Made for More program, which is a year long program, right? Like that's a really long commitment and I knew right off the bat that that was going to feel really draining for me to have to maintain relationships for a long period of time. And so that's why I hired someone, right? <laughs> and so what I get to do is I show up, I do all my influencing, I do all my strategic thinking in the calls once a week. And then my community coach follows up right behind and she nurtures and supports those relationships for the long term. So that's one way of thinking about how we can kind of combine those. I'm just going to check in here. Freen said, you're so tired by so many one things. Yeah, you're shifting to wanting folks to have repeat offering contracts with me. Freen, that's exactly in alignment with your strengths. That makes sense to me. Absolutely. Yeah. And so sometimes what we'll find is the thing that we're doing is exhausting us, right? And this is where the strengths are so useful because we can come in and be like, okay, why is that happening? Like, why do I feel so drained doing that over and over again? And part of that for Farine is like relationship builders, they want to be able to pick up where they left off, right? And they want to keep going and keep building on it. Influencers aren't as interested in that. It doesn't matter to them. For me, I could just do a brand new, like for me, my, the best day of my life would be to meet 500 new humans every single day, right? Like, and just wow them and blow them out of the water and convince them to take some action. And I'll be like, okay, bye. And I run off. But what happens is like where that gets problematic is I can often be seen or not often, I work hard on this, but I can be seen if I'm not careful, if I don't check myself or if I don't have my community coach, Alex, come in behind me, I can be seen as superficial, right? Like I only care about that initial engagement. And then I'm like, hey, bye, I won you over. I don't care anymore. And so this is where we need to be careful. Yeah. Okay. Farina, I'm glad that, <laughs> I'm glad that resonates. So for folks with relationship building, right, they're going to want that nurture over the long period. They're going to want to see the evolution of the client, the evolution of the, of the service. They want to see it. Um, and especially, you know, like Farine has that maximizer in her. So she wants to get the opportunity to do it again and do it better and see people grow. Folks that have lead with executing. Do we have any folks that lead with executing? I honestly like rarely see folks that lead with executing. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't see it very often. Folks who lead with executing love doing. They like, they want to get it done, right? And so they're very action oriented. Um, they tend to usually have like a high, they'll often have a high attention to detail. They like, um, like these folks will do very well with like creating course curriculum often. Sarah, this is second for you. Yeah. So like, Folks who have executing, it's very easy for them to execute on the ideas they have. What's sometimes harder for them is to either come up with that big picture to execute on, or it's harder for them to care about like the relationship building that's required to deliver that offer, right? So what they really want to focus on is like building the curriculum, building the program, like all the worksheets, all of the, like, they love all the nitty gritty. They love getting into the details. They usually have like a really high, um, like they have a, a high sense of responsibility for their work. A lot of the time we see folks like with strong executing, like it can be hard for them to, uh, to like cut their losses and stop something because they're like, but I started, I agreed, I said, yes, I have to see it all the way through, right? And that can be difficult for them to pivot or move uh, laterally instead of just straight forward. Hopefully that makes sense. And then folks with strategic thinking, these are things like input, intellection, ideation, futuristic thinking. They love like nerding out about strategy, right? That's like their main 
that's their main MO. That's what they love doing. And so these folks are going to do really well when they're leading people through whatever strategic thinking has to happen for like that offer to exist, right? Like strategic thinking has to happen in all of our businesses in order for us. Otherwise you're always acting in the moment, right? We become too reactive instead of proactive. And so we're with this strategic thinking, they're really looking at, um, you know, how can we plan this out so everything happens the way we want it to. Karine, you said your last supervisor led from executing and I had to always ask to pump the brakes and do a, how are we feeling check-in? Yeah, absolutely. They're like, go, 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 go. And sometimes they can kind of just bulldoze right through, like, and it can be harder for them to pause and think about it. Absolutely. Yeah, you said you balanced each other well because we kept our department accountable and made sure we were a bonded team. Yeah, absolutely. That's perfect. Okay, I can talk about this clearly all day long, um, but we're going to move through for those other two spots that we need inside these scalable offers. So tell me in the chat, like what ideas are coming up for you when you think about these four domains, when you think about scalable offers, is anything kind of coming to the surface about either your current offer or an offer that you'd be interested in creating? And I know this is a big question, so it's okay if not. All right, we're gonna keep going through because I talked too much about shrinks. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely, good, Freen. Freen said this is a great reminder of language to use when you're booking gigs. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the offer premise. This is a kind of fun exercise to think about. I've heard this done in a couple different ways. And so uh, we'll just go through this one real quick. But what essentially what I want you to walk away with is it's very, very important that it that you're able to articulate what the transformation is in this scalable offer. Because a lot of this is one of the ways in which we don't lose that level of intimacy because we don't, none of you, I know you don't, I know none of you want to create like essentially piece of shit offers that do nothing that are just for money, right? Like that's not for anyone here. And so one of the ways that we make sure we don't do that is by having a really clear articulation of what the offer is and what that promise is that we're creating. So I want you to think about uh, the transformation, the promise you offer is what we move from point A to point B. It's how we move people, right? It's what we're saying to get them from here to here. And so one example of this is like, if I have a hairstylist, let's say I teach, um, I teach hairstylists how to do these like really rad extensions. Like nobody else does this technique the way I do. I do all the coloring. I do the styling, like and you can charge a lot of money for these extensions, right? Like this is way more money than you could charge for a haircut. So the person that's coming to me that's interested in this offer, things that they're saying are like, I never make enough money. I'm so sick to death of doing like little kid haircuts. Um, like I, I really want to be able to use my creativity. I know I could do better at this. Um, I feel like all I know how to do is cut hair, but I should have, I should be able to do more. And I'm sick of like making so little money, right? The transformation that we're promising is what's coming out of that on the other end, right? I know a specialized te technique to transform boring ass hair into drop dead extensions and elaborate coloring. I change, I charge boatloads more money per hour. I'm an industry expert and I'm sought after by like the matrix coloring team hat flies me into Miami for their, you know, I'm like using my hairstylist for example, they like fly her in and she's known in the industry for her technique for coloring and extensions, right? Like this is something that she is known for. So this is the transformation. We're taking you from point A to point B. What you need to get clear on is what's in this middle, right? What is it that you're doing that you're promising that's going to make them take this leap, that's going to get them from point A to point B? So tell me in the chat, do you feel like your current offer is clear, like that promise is clear? And if not, what could you do to make it clearer? I just saw Karin's eyebrows go up. She was like, hmm. 
think about like, just brainstorm into the chat. Like what is the promise that you're delivering? <laughs> Freen's like, hey, no, no. <laughs> this is a hard question. This takes some thought. We spend a whole month on this <laughs> made for more and I'm asking you in like two minutes. So telling the story of the transformation you offer people. Yep, absolutely. Better storytelling. That's definitely one way to improve this, this transformation. One of the things I like to think about to get clearer on the transformation is really doing a, almost like those, uh, you know, those like, I hate those pictures, but like, you'll see those like before and after pictures of people losing weight, right? I want you to fill in, what are those pictures for your ideal client? Who are they? What's happening for them? What do they look like? What are they talking about before they engage with you? And what do they look like? What are they doing? What's happening for them after? Right? And what, what happened in between there? How did you get them there? What did you do? What words did you use? What actions did you take? Right? That's what we're trying to get really clear on because the reality is people don't buy things they don't understand. And so the more we can help people really understand the promise we're offering, the easier, like you just start getting hell yeses all over the place, right? It becomes very, very clear who you're for and what this offer does. Freen, you said a heartfelt offering, connection, affirming our stories, empowering others to live out loud. Yeah, I love that. Freen, I would like to pu push you to dig deeper on that one because I think you can get more specific. Think about the actual sentences that they're using in their head when they're in that after picture, right? What are they feeling? What are they capable of doing? Come back to this because this is a really, really important question. Yeah, Freen, like, here's my promise on every sales call, so for me, for more, we do like an application process and then there's two sets of sales calls. We do a 10 minute call and a 45 minute call to make sure you're a good fit for the program. And in that call, I say exactly that. This is what I'm promising you, I will show up and do. This is what I'm promising you, I will deliver. Are you ready for that, right? Are you in a place where you are capable of receiving this promise? That is so powerful when we tell people what we are promising to show up to do, it makes it a very clear yes or no. Erica, you said empowering businesses to make data-driven decisions to amplify, optimize, and grow. I love that. I want you to break that down even more, Erica, into what, like this is a really important step here. So like when we move from like our, kind of our mission statement, to what we actually say to live humans, right? Like Erica, let me push you a little bit there. Like, do you, would you say that sentence to me in a sales call? And you might, that's okay. Um, probably not, cause it's probably yeah. too vague, yeah. Yeah, and a little like stuffy almost, mm. right? It's like, this is good website material maybe, mm -hmm. right? But I want you to dig even deeper of like, what are you saying to humans? What are you promising them when you talk about your offer? Yeah, okay. I'm always here to geek out about this. So please, you know, come back to me, hop in my Instagram DMs, tag me on the Pivot and Thrive community. We can keep working this. Uh, okay, Sarah, you said you don't have a scalable offer at the moment, but here's what you say about one-on-one -on -one contracts. I love helping nonprofits to tell their stories, to find and cultivate strong leaders, and to work toward a common strategic vis vision. This way, you and your organization can focus more on doing what you do best, delivering life-changing programs and your community. Yeah, I love that, Sarah. Sarah, keep, keep at that because you're really close there. You still have a little bit of like the website-y language. I think you could get even closer, but that is like very, very good. I love it. All right, so let's, this is our third point, our last point here. And I like definitely made way too much content for today. Sorry, this is a new workshop. We haven't done this one before. 
Um, so let's talk a little real quick about the difference between scaling and growth, um, because I think this is important just so you know, because it's important for you to understand strategically what you're focused on right now, right? So when we talk about growth, we often think about these are more like linear terms. So a company adds new resources. This is like adding capital, adding new people by hiring or adding a new technology to grow the, the business. And usually revenue will increase because of this growth, but your cost also increases. OK, so if you see this here, like capital, like capital meaning like if you're bringing in like venture capital funding, right? Like you're gonna owe that money or you owe now like that cost you membership or partnership with someone else. People, if you're hiring people, that's gonna cost you money to pay them. Technology, that's gonna cost you money to use, the, like to pay for the technology. By contrast, scaling is when the revenue increases without a substantial increase in resources. So these are things that can be done in mass without any extra effort. So an example of this is like, if I send an email to 10 people or I send an email to 1 million people, my effort and my cost is essentially the same. Does that make sense, the difference here? And I even put a little joke in there for you, although my anxiety might be a lot higher <laughs> sending an email to a million people. So this is the difference here. We just wanna make sure that we're clear. The best businesses live in a flex position of taking turns between growing and scaling. So often what we see with like healthy, healthy companies will scale, they'll make a scaling attempt. They usually break whatever they created. So like we did this in Made For More, we scaled and then I broke it. And by broke it, I mean, I created something that I could not serve everyone. And so then I hire to fix the problem. Then we take a rest and then we scale again or we continue resting in that state for a little while. So. Think about, you know, I want you to think about like, are you currently in a state where you need to scale, where you need to hire, or where you need to rest? Because we're going to always be cycling through these states, and it's important that we're picking the right one at the right time. <laughs> Freen, I want it all. <laughs> I love it. Well, you, I was like, well, you sound rested then if you want it all, but hiring and rest. Yeah. Yeah. So like we just went through a phase of hiring. We're now working on a phase of scaling. Um, we took a little rest in between. We're working on a phase of scaling and then we'll work on a phase of hiring at the get and again at the end of 2021. Yeah. Cool. All right. Perfect. Yeah. So some of us, you know, it's, we get confused sometimes thinking of like scaling and hiring at the same time. And I would really encourage you to alternate what you're doing and not try to push both at the same time. So we'll look real quick at a couple examples. These are some folks in the made for more program. And I just like to highlight them because all of them have built scalable offers that are not courses. And this is like a big thing. Everybody thinks like you got to build an online course. You don't have to build an online course. There's a gajillion different other ways you can scale your intellectual property or a physical product. Um, so this is Frenchie. Frenchie actually just turned to virtual summits. So she leads with strategic thinking and she realized like she did not want to create a group program. She did not want, she has a mini course, which was fine, but it wasn't as much fun as she thought it would be. And virtual summits have turned out to be really her scalable offer. So every quarter or every other quarter, she'll do a week long summit where she interviews people, uh, experts in her industry, and she generates this whole kind of, it's almost like a week long retreat in a way. It's like a virtual retreat for the whole week. And you can purchase the recordings as a part, you can purchase the ticket for a certain price, and then you can purchase the recordings as a separate price. Um, and that has become her scalable offer. This is Sarah. Sarah leads with relationship building. Sarah built a membership for people struggling with sleep. Um, and so this allows her, because she leads with relationship building, it allows her to create an offer that has reoccurring revenue and has people hanging in for the long term, right? Most of these folks are in the membership for at least six months, if not a year. And so she can flex that relationship building uh, strength. This is Katie Owen. Katie's a Vermonter, actually. She's like one of our only Vermonters. 
Um, so you might know her. She just started a card making business. And so this is a good example of a physical product that's scalable, right? And so like she can increase, she can exponentially increase the amount of cards she's selling. And um, we see this too with like, you know, if you sell wine or you sell soap or you sell, like you can scale a physical product just like you can your intellectual property. I would argue it's really good to combine the two together. Um, and that way you're not burning yourself out on either end. And this is Christy. Christy does live clinics. So she's a copywriter and she actually will like host these workshops where it's like 90 minutes of learning how to write better copy. And then she live reviews one of the people in the, in the workshop, right? And so everybody else gets to learn from that example during that time. And again, this is another opportunity to like have a price for showing up and then having a price for the replay. These are all great scalable offers that are in alignment with their strengths. So this is a page that I always suggest uh, screenshotting. There are so many different scalable offers that I guarantee you have not thought of. These are just some of them um, that we see often throughout like our time with clients. Um, some big ones I'd encourage you to think about right now uh, that have been very popular are like retreats, virtual retreats are doing really well. Workshop bundles are really great. So if you're someone who does workshops a lot, like I do, you can kind of just put a couple, like a series of workshops together and sell it as a bundle that can work really well. Um, and then another one are, that's doing great right now are certifications. So if you have like a specific way of doing something creating a certification process around your specific method, you can package that and sell that and teach that to people. So that's a really kind of a cool one that I've seen a lot of folks doing. I have a friend, uh, Latasha, that's doing that right now. She has like a, a program for teaching virtual assistants how to start their own business. And then she created a certification program to like uh, become like a certified launch virtual assistant. So like for launches and such. Um, so these are all different examples. Your main takeaways here for the scalable offer, the things I really want you to focus on is it has to be in alignment with your strengths. It's got to feel fun. If you pick something that sucks and is boring and is out of alignment, you're going to burn out and you're going to lose sight of it. And it just, it's a waste of time. So pick something you really enjoy. They don't have to be courses. There's so many different options here. It might be something you already have and it just needs to be tweaked a little bit. Like one-on-one -on -one coaching can very easily transform into group coaching, right? So there's like some of these things that we already have in place and it's just an easy tweak. It has to have a solid transformation process. Please, please, please spend time with those questions we talked about, about like, how are you moving them from point A to point B? This is really important to get clear on. And as the offer grows, your expenses don't or they grow very little, right? That's something we really want to make sure we're grinding in there. So how are we feeling so far? Let me know in the chat, any ideas that are percolating, things that are coming up for you? Did you guys come in with thoughts about scalable offers? Um, yeah, let me just look at the comments here. Yeah, Freen, love you girl, talk to you soon. Um, Karin, you said, Marissa, thinking about your question for physical goods, it could be an offer of a recipe book, a schedule, yeah. so. If you have physical products, um, things like guides, uh, anything, think about things that you do over and over and over again. That can often be a really good scalable product. Uh, designs, drawings, proposals, templates, blueprints, methods, just like you said, recipes. Um, it can also be like if you do have some like if some of your strengths lend to teaching, often just teaching people how to do what you already do is a great scalable offer. Uh, so instead of like, let's say, let's take Alex who makes uh, the marshmallows pneumatic kitchen. So like if she wanted, she could also create an offer that teaches other chefs how to make marshmallows the way she does. Right. Like we can. We can have two demographics. We can have like the people that we're selling marshmallows to, and then we can also be pitching to the people who want to make things the way we make them. 
Sarah, you said, I currently offer quarterly workshops in partnership with two organizations, but I don't get paid for them. I've been wanting to break out on my own so I can get paid. Yeah, absolutely. Or see if you, can you negotiate to get paid with the ones you're doing now? I always get so frustrated when people aren't getting paid. <laughs> Makes me sad. Yes, absolutely. Workshops are an excellent one. I love workshops. They're a fun. Um, we did a hiring workshop in January that we charged $47 for, and we had like 20 registrants. It's like a great little bonus for the month, right? And if you plan them out even bigger, you can have, you know, you could have substantial workshops. Um, let's see. Sarah, you said a strategic plan scalable. Oh, oh, from here? Is that what you mean? Yeah, okay, so a strategic plan would be, so for instance, like in Made for More, I teach people how, I, every quarter I teach the whole group how to plan their quarter. So like I'm teaching you how to strategically plan your business goals, right? And so, that would be like, I could sell that process that I teach. I could create a certification around it and teach other people how to do it. Or I could like bottle that in a recording or in like a step-by-step -step workbook. And so other people could copy or like replicate my strategic planning process. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm gonna scoot us right through. Make sure you grab this workbook. If you didn't see it already, I'll throw it in the chat again. This essentially walks you through, it's like 11 pages. It walks you through our five week launch strategy to get your scalable product out there. And this is really, really good specifically for, the, uh, for folks who have a new scalable offer. Um, this is not our launch strategy for once you have an established offer. It's for when you're trying to establish or validate an offer. So definitely check that out. Um, I'll put it, I'm just going to type it in here again. And I'm going to open it up for um, Q&A. If you guys have questions, please feel free to like unmute. Oh, thank you, Karen. Perfect. Oh, that's for the Clifton Strengths. Yeah, there you go, Erica. Erica, there are two, um, I don't know why that's in the hyper one. There are two different assessments. One is... $19 and the other is $50. Um, my preference, if money is not a big deal, I would go with the bigger one because you get like a 25 page report and you get really, really in-depth information. If money feels tight, go with the $20 one and just get the top five. It's totally fine. You can still do a lot of work with that. Um, so yeah. Here's your homework. Here's what I want you to walk away with. I know I'm going over here a little bit. I've wrapped up. I really appreciate your time and the floor is open. If you have any questions, like I'm not in a hurry, so please feel free to shoot away. I just want to say thank you so much uh, for, for sharing these insights and little gems with us. I know um, it's something that everybody's looking um, for how, ways to have a bigger impact, um, both through your work and also on your own financial position and how to have more choice and the ability to use your time in the way that best fulfills and supports you. So I think that yeah. creating a scalable offer absolutely aligns with both of those. And um, we can create real positive change in the community in the way that we run our businesses and using a scalable offer to elevate the work that we're already doing um, really aligns with that. So. Um, feel free continue if you have questions drop them in the chat um, but i just want to thank you emily for sharing your yeah, time absolutely. Um, and and also let you know that you know this is something that um, you're welcome to engage with emily in our pivot and thrive community about this or connect with her about made for more um, and and opportunities to to collaborate with emily more specifically um, 
We also, I want to let you know, we're um, launching a course in the Pivot and Thrive community about um, business insights and scaling for growth. Nice. Um, so I'm really excited about that and looking for about five people to, um, to beta test that course. So if you're interested and want to try out, um, we look at 25 different business models that you can apply to your existing business to um, take your, your offering to the next level using a scalable growth model um, in alignment with your strengths. So, um, I'm excited to try that out and look forward to cool. getting your input and, um, and, and seeing where you grow your business, um, as you, as you launch in new directions. Um, something that we don't talk about much, you know, there's such a focus in, uh, the entrepreneurial world on innovation and it's really only like one or 2% of businesses that actually are able to innovate because that means that you're doing something entirely new, totally yeah. different. And so <laughs> there's just such power in reinventing and yeah. taking those small iterative changes, um, to take what you're already doing to the next level. You know your business the best, and so you're gonna be the best positioned to make the changes that you know will support your audience well. Uh, we wanna help you, both Emily and I in our, in our businesses wanna help you um, to elevate your work so that you can have a bigger impact, so that you can have more choice, more time, more money, and, and the freedom uh, to, to grow your business as you want to um, using a scalable model. So. Um, check those ideas out or check those opportunities out. I look forward to connecting with you about that. We also later this month have the wellness fair, which is Yay. a really exciting opportunity um, to connect with other firm entrepreneurs. It's taking place April 26th through May 7th. And um, there's an all access pass, which I talk about a scalable model. Um, we hope you'll share the opportunity. It is uh, focused on 20, uh, it is in collaboration with 20 of the community members in the Pivot and Thrive community offering different services, experiences, special access offers and promo codes. And so really you, you get access to two weeks of live and on-demand events and hundreds of dollars worth of promotional codes and experiences and consulting services. So I hope you'll check it out. Our hope is that people are able to invite small changes in their life that help support their well-being and help them on their, their wellness journey. So um, I hope you'll give it a try. And I should say, one lucky member will win a Vermont staycation. Yeah. So everybody's ready for a getaway and uh, how nice to be able to pack a weekend bag over the summer when everybody's vaccinated. Um, and you can, you know, get a little bit of that rest time in after you've scaled and grown your business. Um, so Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and sharing your talents. And yeah, um, I'm really you. excited to um, help people connect with you and um, to grow their business in a way that, that helps you to sustain yourself and to feel fulfilled and to move from that state of yeah. working to mm. flourishing. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's what we're all really striving to achieve in our business. Yeah, thank you all. Yeah, and thanks... Thank you all for being so engaging in the chat. It always like fuels me and, and it feels so good to like connect with you all. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. And great comments in the Yay. chat. Thank you, everyone. All right. Take awesome. care and enjoy the sunshine today. Yeah. Bye.